I sincerely apologize. Holy Spirit said to me, Holy Spirit made a statement. He said, watch out. He said, very soon, very soon, the devil will take advantage of those leaders. Why they are wearing ripped jeans to preach to the people? He said, very soon, the sons of Jezebel will begin to enter the church with ripped jeans. When the sons of Jezebel begin to enter the church, the daughters of Jezebel begin to wear ripped jeans and they are showing their nipple. They are showing their, all their ties. Then how, how can the pastor not correct them when the pastor is, is the one that started it? Tell me. How can the pastor correct the church if the, if the leader is already wearing ripped jeans? Please, I, see, if our generation is not careful, if Holy Spirit told me something, he said, prayer. A generation can pray for a revival, but you see, true revival is a change of a lifestyle. It's not just prayer alone. These people will be so changed and transformed to the point that people will say, the Bible says the Ayemeko, a belly, a kobali atena, zeko, bali asu atena, zia, ako, can Peter, Peter, unlearned, no school, no school. We go to the book of Acts chapter 3. They saw Peter. They said, this guy, he has been with Jesus. What kind of transformation is that? A man who never went to school, he began to, he began to quote the Bible. He took them to Genesis. He began to talk of Abraham. He was so transformed. They saw them. They said, these ones are Christians. Christian is not people who speak in tongue. What I'm trying to tell you is this generation is about to make another mistake. Mark me. Mark, see, when I talk, I'm saying, I'm saying what Holy Spirit is revealing to me. Mark my word. This generation, if we are not careful, despite this revival, you see, the power will come. Generation will receive power. There will be, there, there will be a multitude of people in the church. But if we are not careful, we will lose our morals. We will, that's purity. Do you know what they call holiness? Holiness, righteousness. This was the foundation that was given to us. Purity. 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 This generation, don't, they, we are, those, those are topics that this generation don't want to talk about. There can be no true revival without purity. Purity of heart. Holiness. When I look at Muslims, beautiful women, beautiful Muslim, on their wedding day, you will not see boobs, you won't see nipple, you won't see cleavages. You will see a Christian on their own wedding day, on their own wedding day. All the people you have, you have, you have preached to, all the people you have preached to on your wedding day, you now you have now become the sandboard. You have now become the one the, the devil is now using to manipulate all the souls you have won. Oh my God, I'm going to drop it there. I'm going to drop it there. My spirit is really fired up tonight. I'm going to drop it there. But please, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm saying it again. Our generation is about to make another mistake. Prayer is not all there is. Elijah can pray. Brother Kenny read it yesterday. Elijah prayed. He called fire. Physical fire came down. A man of prayer. This man shot the heaven for three, three years and six months. And yet, Elijah went into depression. He went into depression. <laughs> As well. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you. Please, I'm not upset with any one of you. I'm not upset. My spirit is just fired up. I'm a messenger of God. I'm supposed to deliver the message of God. I'm telling you, people must look at you and say, ah. There was a day I was listening to one of my mentors. He didn't say anything. He was just talking and I broke into tears. There's a man of God in Nigeria called Pastor Kumui. 1989, they went to receive him to come and preach. The moment the person who came to receive him opened the door, the moment he saw him, he... There is a presence you carry called purity. Okay. Purity, purity, purity. Brad Joshua, please go ahead. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. It is well. Thank you very much for a towel. Um, I appreciate it. Um, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak and to encourage 
uh, the gathering. I really appreciate it. God bless you and the rest of the uh, G-O-T-E team. God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, let's just get into it. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for tonight. Lord God, as we come in your presence, Lord God, speak to us, speak through us. Let it be a wonderful um, ministration from everyone here tonight. Lord, let us all be blessed, even myself, as you speak through me in the mighty name of Jesus. Take, take full control. Have your way. Use us, Lord God. Take full control. Have fun. Let us have fun in your presence and you enjoy us as well. Let it be a mutual, wonderful gathering for you and us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I I will say, Bertal, thank you very much for shit, for for informing us of what was laid in your heart. Um, because I believe it's highly important for us to understand what the Holy Spirit is dropping inside of us. And that actually aligns with what I wanted to encourage us with tonight which I have as living in the spirit, or you can say walking in the spirit. So what I want to talk about tonight is living in the spirit or, or walking in the spirit. Um, so can we quickly, um, without further ado, can we open our Bibles, if we have them with us, to Romans chapter 8. I believe I read this, we read this section yesterday night. I'm just going to go into it one more time. Romans chapter 8 from verse 12 to 17. Sorry, I will try to say the verse uh, after the chapter so it can be captured in the, in the chat, so I apologize. Romans chapter eight from 12 to 17. I will try and get there before everybody. Uh, won't be surprised if I'm the last one there. Okay, Romans chapter eight from 12 to 17. And it says, huh? And it says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will die. Excuse me. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will die. You will live. Ah, sorry. Let me read that verse one more time. I'm so sorry. For if you live by the spirit... For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I apologize, King James Version. I'm sorry. Verse 14. For as many, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The Lord bless the reading of his word. I apologize for my stuttering. Um, but yes, uh, I really want I wanted to go back to this section because I know last night we read it, but I really felt led to talk about the importance of walking in the spirit. You saw evidence of that through Brother Tywell's um, information that he relayed to us. Walking in the spirit, living in the spirit makes you a vessel, an extension. Um, it makes you um, a, a package to channel God's anointing, channel God's capability, channel God's um, gifts to the other world, to the rest of the world. Living in the spirit is even critical for you to even fulfill the will of God for your life. You, and I want to preach, and I want to talk about this to, to the point where I'm also talking to myself because it's very challenging for all of us. This is the main battle of our, one of the main battles of our existence as believers, the battle between the flesh and the spirit. You know, I really want us to delve deep into why it's important to live in the spirit. You know, we just read in, in Romans 8, verse 14, particularly, it says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. This is basically saying that an indication of you being a child of God is you, be, is you being led by the Spirit of God. It's very important for you to be led by God's Spirit. It's very important for you to understand your communication style from God and with God. It's highly important for you to even be able to comprehend what God is saying to you, to be able to comprehend what God is communicating to you. I like to use communicate rather than just saying, because God can really communicate a message to you in various formats with inanimate objects, 
with people you don't expect, you know, with current events in your life, you know, it's very important to, to walk in the spirit, you know. Um, let, let's also go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. Galatians 5, verse 18. I'll be very quick. I will not try and go over time again. I apologize again for that last night. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. And it says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Let me actually go. Let me actually read from verse 16. Sorry about this. 16 to 18. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law, you know. Referring to the, you know, the, the word that Bertal was given to us right before he handed it off to me, it's important to understand that what he was saying is not coming from a place of law. It's not coming from a place of tradition. It's not coming from a place of custom. It's coming from a place of keying into the spirit. Sometimes when it comes to keying into the spirit, not everything is just black and white. It's not a black and white rule that you have to understand word for word. It's not a consistent kind of rule that has to be abided by. When it comes to the spirit, there is no bound. Because when you're keying into the spirit, you're keying into God. Who has no bound? Who is not bound by time, space, or matter? Or your idea of him. Of him. When it comes to keying into the spirit, it requires um, complete openness and brokenness for God to enter into your life and to be able to lead you. This is why we, the Bible refers to so much of this, of this constant battle of the flesh and the spirit, which we all deal with. There are so many things that we want to do all the time. I'm one of them. I have desires. I have temptations. There's so many things we want to do all the time. Brother Tao, I saw Brother Tao in the gym today. Let me tell you, in the gym, that is the, that is the hub, a hub of temptation, especially this day and age, with the way people are wearing things in the gym. Even me, I should be careful about what I'm wearing too, you know? I'm letting you know that this is a constant battle from when we wake up to when we go to bed. And the only way we can stay afloat is by abiding in the spirit, by abiding in the spirit. So what are, what are some of the ways that we can walk in the spirit? And it's highly important that we key into this. What are some of the ways? One of the main ways, obedience. Obedience. One of the best ways you can actually practice obedience is actually being very diligent in reading the word of God. The, the beautiful thing about the word of God is the fact that it is God speaking to you. It, it's, it's confirmed in John chapter 1, verse 1. This word is him. The more you read this word, the more you get an understanding of what God really wants you to do on a regular basis and how he communicates to you. The more you read this word, you'll be seeing how the word is ingrained in your mind and how it will come into fruition in certain scenarios in your life. It's highly important that you actually dig deep into this word because that will be your fuel for obedience. When you come into grips with a situation that doesn't, sound, doesn't resonate with the spirit of God inside of you, you'll think twice. That's a moment of conviction for you. That's a moment of the word of God coming alive for you. That's a moment of you being tested right there for you. That's a moment for God to speak to you. You know, obedience is one of the most practical and foundational ways of keying into the spirit of God. You're, what you're wondering why, like, you're wondering, how can I be obedient? How can I listen to God? One of the best ways to start is this word right here. Making your brother, brother, um, brother Elijah, or brother Kenny, as you know him, said it last night, making the word your daily bread, making your daily, um, your, your daily food. It's highly important because it's, it's part of your basis for how you can actually pra uh, practicalize, if I can use that word, obedience, practice obedience. You know, another way, excuse me, another way that you can actually practice walking in the spirit, sowing into the spirit. You know, can we quickly read Galatians chapter 6, verse 8? And that same Galatians, Galatians 6, 8. Galatians 6, 8. And it says, for he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. 
You know, another word for sow is plant or invest. That's a probably good modern word to use to relate in a general sense. Another good word for sow is to invest. Investing in the spirit is one way you can actually walk in the spirit. Investing your time, your energy, your efforts, your heart, your mind, soul, your body into keying into the spirit. Simply put, you're making yourself a sacrifice for God. Romans 12, 2, uh, excuse me, Romans 12, 1 tells us that it is important for us to be able to, to, um, lead, uh, to give ourselves as a holy and acceptable sacrifice to God. That is our true worship to him. As we continue to subdue our flesh, we are allowing the spirit to take full control and we're allowing God to be able to use us. It's, it's, it, to me, it's like, It's like if you have a glass full of liquid, if you, have, if you have a glass full of something, right? If you have a glass full of something, the only way to have another drink or to have, drink something else is for that glass to be empty first and then refill it with something else. God cannot actually invest, can you, cannot use you as a temple or a glass if there's something already occupying that space. If there's something already occupying that space, God is God has given us already free will to be able to say, I, I don't have a place in here for you. I don't have a this isn't a, a vessel for me for me to operate. If you're if your vessel you have is being consumed by the flesh, your desires, your own personal agenda, your ambition, and this is a tough one. You know, I know Bertal was very um specific on these things that easily take us away, things that are good. But it still <clears throat> can be outside the will of God. Ambition, great dreams, all these different things. They're consuming you. But are they, is it giving the suitable room? Emphasis on suitable. Is it giving the suitable room for the Holy Spirit to come into play? Are you giving yourself up for the Holy Spirit to be able to come into play? If you're not, it'll be challenging for you to even relay the word of God to others. It'll be challenging for you to be able to inform others of certain messages. If Brother Tao's heart is filled with his own personal agenda, his own know-how, his own belief system, it will only be shown by what, he, by what he tells us. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's what's inside of you that will be shown. You know? So it's important to leave ourselves as a holy and acceptable sacrifice to God. This is our, this is our temple. God can only use us if we allow him, if we create room. Is that one song by, oh God, well, help me. Is it Jonathan Red McReynolds or something like that about making room for God? Even though I, you can see, if you really listen to the message, it's not even about, if you listen to the whole song, it's not about just carving out space for God. It's taking over the entire area. So those are one of the main, okay, thank you. <laughs> those are one of the main, one of the, some of the main methods of how you can walk in the spirit. Another way of walking in the spirit is by praying in the spirit. Brother Kenny was speaking about it last night, or Brother Elijah, however you mainly refer to him. Um, it's important to pray, highly important. But imagine praying in the spirit. Now, you, a lot of you are probably thinking like, ah, Brother Joshua or Joshua, is not the same thing? To an extent, you know, praying in the spirit requires keying into another level when you're communicating with God. You know, if, if you get a chance to read 1 Corinthians 14, when you get a chance, I don't have much time tonight. Read, read 1 Corinthians 14 and under, you will understand the significance of praying in the spirit, of praying in a different tongue. Because you're not even talking, you're not even just regularly talking, you're communicating with God in a language you may not even understand whatsoever. You know, those are some of the ways you can key into the spirit that actually energizes your spirit, that actually brings you from level to level, you know. So. You probably might ask yourself, what are some of the ways that I actually feel like I'm actually walking in the spirit? What are some evidences? What are some indicators of me actually living in the spirit? Let's go back to that same Galatians. Let's go to Galatians 5. This is a notorious one that a lot of us know. Galatians chapter 5. Let's read from 22 to 26. Galatians 5, 22 to 26. And it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, or patience in some versions, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh 
with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You see, I really want to highlight one main thing before I go. Subduing the flesh. It's like, it's like a, um, a seesaw. If ever you, it's an. If those of you that have heard of a seesaw, it's an Amer. If, if not, it's an American. I don't know if it's American, but it's highly popular in this country. Basically, a, um, something you'll find on a playground in which you'll have two people sitting on a long beam um, that gets flipped on, you know, side to side based on the weight um, capacity on each side. You know, as one person goes down, the other one is going up. As the other person goes back down, the other one is going up. The, both cannot be down at the same time. The both cannot be down at the same time. The both cannot be up at the same time. One has to go down for the other to go up. One has the other one has to go down again for the other one to go back up. You know, you you have the power to choose what you would like to render your body to, either to the things of this world or to the spirit of God. And I and I'm telling you, I'm also speaking to myself. We all have many desires. Trust me, we especially in this day and age, we have many things on our plate. We have many things that we're focused on. Many things are are taking control of us. A lot of us, you know, we don't even realize that we're acting like, um, who was it, Martha? You know, Martha. We, we Martha will worry about all these different things and whatnot. You know, but is but Mary has chosen the good thing to focus on. It's important to prioritize the Spirit of God. It's really important for us to realize that without the Spirit, we cannot do the, the will of God. The reason why I wanted us to also let me also go back to re, the reason why I wanted us to read Galatians five is those are evidences of us actually walking in the spirit. How patient are you with people? How loving are you with people? You know, how much of temperance are you practicing? How much of goodness are you practicing? Because, you know, the word of God also says, if you don't love my people, but you say you love God, you're a liar. These are some of the ways you can walk in the spirit. I mean, these are some of the evidences of you walking in the spirit. You know, you will know that you're actually just being a humble servant of God by just how you react to one another, how you react to those that even despitefully use you, that don't even appreciate you. You know, I just want us to be able to leave this gathering, understanding the, the significance of walking in the spirit of God. You know, may God bless us as we continue to dig deeper and understanding why it's important to live with this spirit, because it's the only way we can actually really have quality relationship with him. And may we actually wax stronger as we do so in Jesus name. Before we go, let us just take this time and pray. Uh, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Actually, first, let's actually just thank God within these next couple minutes. Let's just thank God. Let's just thank God for this opportunity to be in this place. Thank God for the salvation of your soul. Thank God for everything. Let's just thank him. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, God, for tonight. We bless your holy name. Thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God, for the word we're going to hear even after this. We thank you, God, for even the word we heard before now. We bless your holy name. Be that exalted in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for the salvation of our souls. Thank you, God, for the fact that we're here tonight and that we know you. Even if some of us are not even saved, for the fact that you call us to be part of this gathering, we are thankful because it is not by our power, but by your grace alone. We're so thankful, oh God. We bless your holy name. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let us also pray for mercy. Let's ask God for mercy to come upon us. Ask God for mercy for all the times we let the flesh take full control of us and not the spirit. Prayers in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, let Lord, we ask for your mercy. We go into your throne of mercy and ask for you to forgive us for all the times we've rendered to this flesh rather than the spirit. For all the times we've sold into the flesh and not sold into the spirit. Forgive us, Lord God. Give us the grace to do better. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let us also pray one more time for the grace to just live in the spirit. You know, Acts 1, I believe verse 8 tells us, you know, that um, um, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witnesses in all of Jerusalem, uh, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. But the key part of that verse is when the Spirit, Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you have power. You are empowered. But let's ask God for this for grace to live in the spirit so we can be empowered as we move forward as believers. Prayers in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare, Lord God, we decree and declare, we ask for grace. We decree grace upon our lives. 
Lord God, we are your children, we are your heirs. We ask for grace. Let grace rest upon us to be able to walk in your spirit, to be able to walk in the way you want us to walk, in the mighty name of Jesus. May that spirit of all the things that we have led to uh, discuss tonight, those holies, those, those holy gifts and spirits, let it be upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us grace, Lord God, as we move forward as believers in this planet. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I apologize for the speedy prayers. I try to stick to time, but um, the floor is yours um, for the uh, for the title. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Um, bro Joshua, I really appreciate your diligence. May the Lord continue to use you the more in Jesus' name. Thank you for your preparation. May you continue to hear from God. May you continue to be a vessel a usable vessel, a vessel of gold, a vessel of honor in his hand in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, he, he said a couple of things. I would, I would really suggest, I really suggest, you know, everything I do, I don't like to force or try to be like you must or you have to. No, no, no. I will advise everyone, please go on YouTube. Go and watch all the videos of everyone who have ministered. The administration are very insightful, very deep, filled with revelation from last week. You might not watch the one I ministered months or weeks past. You can watch them by, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I would recommend you watch them. But I wanted to watch these people who have been ministering since last week. I will really encourage you. He said something very deep on some of the things he said. He said, the sling, one person must go down. Both can rise at the same time. Both can be down at the same time. <laughs> that is extremely very deep. God will not rise within you and I until you die to the flesh. One person, that was why John the Baptist said, I must decrease for him to increase. Please, I encourage you. Please. My wife knows me. People who are very close to me knows me. Sometimes I can listen to preaching for six hours, for four hours. I'm being honest with you. That is because that is, that is my calling. If you're going to grow, you must be willing to commit time to listen to messages, to study the word. I'm telling you the truth. You know, so... Thank you once again. I pray this word causes a huge transformation within us in Jesus' name. Bro, Kenny, over to you. Uh, thank you, Brother Taiwo. Um, and um, thank you, Brother Joshua. Um, that was, <laughs> honestly, that was honestly powerful. Just as Brother Taiwo said, that was honestly very powerful. Um, and we'll just continue in the same, um, in the same atmosphere. Um, my Heavenly Father, we just give you glory. We just give you praise. We bless your holy name. Oh God, for this opportunity, oh God, for us to come together tonight, oh God, and fellowship and sharpen each other, Father. And we pray, oh God, that the time that we spend, oh God, in your word, Jesus, will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. This we pray, oh God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Um, um we just bless the name of God. And um, I'm just gonna get right into it. The title of um the short word that I have for us tonight um is God is in the neighborhood. Um, and I'm just gonna start with uh uh, and try not to say a lot of ums today. Um, just did it again. We're going to start with uh, Psalms, Psalm 145, verse 17 to 19. Repeat Psalm 145, 17 to 19. Go. And I read <clears throat> The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He, is also, he, he also will hear their cry and will save them. I'm just gonna emphasize on verse 19 um, right now. I'm gonna repeat it one more time. He will fulfill the desire of them that Fear him. I'm going to stick to that A part, um, especially where it says fear him. In other words, that I want to say instead of fear, not just instead, but another term for fear, I'll say is reference him, acknowledge him, worship him. And what we're going to really focus on today, trust him. 
All right. Um, also in Psalm chapter 46, the Bible talks about how God is our refuge and strength. In verse 10 specifically, it says, be still and know that I am God. Be still, be calm, be patient, and know that I am God. Not that I am a God, right? No, not, not, not that, but know that I am God. The only God, right? The God that can do all things, right? Um, one thing that is so important for us this season is that we must trust God's timing more than anything, all right? Um, if there's anything that I've learned, honestly, in my walk, it's that God works on time, right? <laughs> like, uh, like timing is so important, right? I, I, um, I forget who, who said it, I don't know if it was yesterday or sometime this week, um, but God's instructions um, go and go now are completely different things, right? God works so much on time, but I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, um, dive into that too, too far because I'm gonna go off topic. All right, um, but but I'm just gonna give an example. Um, we all use Amazon, right? Um, and when we order something, um, so we have the app, right? And we order something, it tells us when it's gonna ship, all right? And it tells us when it's out for delivery, right? I'm gonna speak for myself. Anytime I order something that is like important to me, that I really want, you know? Um, the second I get that notice on my phone that um, it's out for delivery, I get like excited, I get ecstatic, you know? I'm like, let's go, I'm just looking at it. It's telling me um, it's 10 stops away, nine, eight, and so on, right? Now stay with me here. At times when we're praying to God for something, asking for a move, a ship, um, when we're just asking for God, right? We're seeking God. And then we see our brother, our friend, um, our church member receive their breakthrough or they, they receive what they've been praying for, right? Um, all of a sudden there's, there tends to be like a, 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 an inch, I would say, not, not a whole, a big feeling, but just an inkling, something just like tweaks in your heart, an inch of doubt, a little worry in there, right? That just comes out of nowhere. Yes, you're supposed to be happy, but you've been praying, you've been praying, you hear something like, like, um, God, I've been praying, what, what's going on, you know? Uh, but I want you to know that when, you see your brother, when you see your friend, when you see a church member, somebody you fellowship with, when you see them giving their testimony, right? That's God also telling you, listen, son, daughter, I'm 10 stops away. I'm nine, I'm eight, I'm so on and so forth. I'm in your neighborhood. I'm this so amount of steps away from you, all right? Hallelujah. Continuing on, I'm not gonna take too much of your time, but one more example, um, let's take the same, let's take the same um, Amazon shipping reference, right? We're just gonna use that, right? Um, you place your order, and you see that it's guaranteed to deliver on Saturday, say Saturday, all right? Um, and Amazon Prime does work that way, you know, two day shipping is guaranteed. Um, I do like that. But um, let's say it's guaranteed to ship on, on Saturday, right? Now, right? now I'm pumped, let's say for me, um, let's say I order, a, I order a new microphone, right? At this point, I'm pumped. I throw out my old one. I don't need it no more. I'm getting ready for this new one. It's when I use it, I know it's about to sound great. I'm I'm cleaning out my desk. I'm making all this preparation because I know that it's supposed to be coming on Saturday. And then during all that excitement preparation, a day comes, bam, a notice comes and says, delivery's coming on Monday or Sunday. Which does tend to happen a lot, right? If we all know Amazon, that does happen. But um out of nowhere, we get hit with that little delayed notice, I guess I'll say. Um, and then at that moment, frustration sets in. I'm gonna speak for myself, right? Frustration sets in. Uh, and then I start complaining about the Amazon services. How can you promise me? How can you guarantee me a delivery, two day shipping? I have Amazon Prime, I pay $7.99 a month. How can you now all of a sudden, a day before the delivery, tell me that's getting pushed to on um, Monday? It's not Amazon Prime anymore. I'm like, like, come on, like at this point, I start complaining about the services. Now let's relate that to real life, right? right? I get it. Let's let's take. I get a job interview. Let's just take this for instance. I get a job interview, and they tell me they love me, right? They they want me so bad and everything. They give me a start date, right? And I'm getting, making all these preparations. I haven't told my job yet, cause I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna move on. Like, am I gonna just leave, or am I gonna give them a two week notice? I haven't figured it out. A week comes to um the start date, and I'm like, all right, now I know exactly how I'm gonna tell my job. Now I'm gonna leave, and then I get an email saying, oh hi Elijah, I'm just using my name as reference, all right. Hi, Elijah, listen, we still want you, all right? You're still our deep, I are, listen, I, bleh, wow. Our ideal, ideal 
Ooh, God, come on. Um, our ideal person for this position. However, we just need to extend the start date for so-and-so reasons or whatever, right? They, they push back a week later. And then let's say it gets pushed back again, right? And you're going to send the email. Yes, of course, I understand. I'm patient. Thank you for letting me know. But how, while, while you're sending that email, right in your heart, right in your mind, you start questioning and you start getting discouraged and frustrated. Start going to God like, God, I prayed about this. Um, the interview was great. God, what is going on? All this complaint, right? I start complaining about the services. God, right? I start complaining. I start getting frustrated. I start getting really discouraged. But listen. You don't know the battle that God is fighting in the background, right? We don't know the battles that God is facing in the background, right? Um, and we and we just feel like things are just being delayed. That's that's the thing. We just all we we feel is everything that we can see in front of us that's happening to us. But we don't understand all the battles that God is fighting for us in the background. So we don't have to deal with that, right? Understand God loves us so much that there are reasons for those silent moments, right? And I have two of those re um, reasons right here written down right pray i didn't lose anybody i'll try to speak a little um slowly if i'm rushing through it first reason it took time to properly package your blessing right but god says um let's say uh you're you're waiting for same thing like we're waiting for our blessing to come through and everything but it takes time to prop it took time for god to properly put that together Right. God says, look, my, my son, my daughter is more worth than than is is worth more than just some surprise box. Right. My son, he's he she is is worth uh, me putting together all of their desires, all of their prayers, their tears, their blood, sweat and tears, everything. My son, my daughter is worth all of that. So I'm going to take the time to put all of that together. And guess what? I'm going to wrap a bow around. It. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take my time and put a nice ironed out bow at the top. Right. Um, um, it took time to probably put that together because God's not just going to give you something. Um, um, uh, uh, what's, what's the term? Faster, if that's the word, I think, I believe if I use that word correctly, if, pardon me if I didn't. Um, and then second, second reason, all right, if that package delivered too soon, that blessing, that breakthrough on um, what you prayed for came to you too soon, right? You wouldn't understand the power that comes in waiting on God. We wouldn't, we would take that blessing, that breakthrough, we would take all of that for granted, right? Okay. I'm not really sure where um where I got it. Um, correct me if I get it wrong, but um I heard I, I heard it somewhere it said, um, God doesn't say no, he says not yet. Because if you get that break, but if because if you got that breakthrough when you ask for it, you will turn away from God. But if you would wait on God, if you're patient on God, when God said not yet, and you said, yes, God, I'm waiting, I'm patient. Now I'll keep praying, waiting for you that you didn't just tell me no, you told me yes, but you told me to wait. You will get that breakthrough and you'll still have God in your corner, hallelujah. Think about how, how much better that would be than for me to ask for God, you know, give me a job, it's my prayer, give me a job where I don't have to, um, I don't have to stress, you know, I can, I can, I can pay for everything that I need to and still have time for you, right? And still have time to, to do whatever I need. And God, and it's this job comes that pays, I don't know, uh, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be realistic, 300K a year, right? Because it's possible, right? It's possible, I claim it. But let's say a job comes 300K a year, right? And I get that and then I'm like, I just turn away from God. Listen, I got money, I got everything I need and I turn away from God. What life is that? But let's say, I pray for that and God tells me, wait, this job comes and that job that's telling you, oh, uh, we're just gonna push, we're gonna push you back a, a week, gonna push you back another week. That's God saying, my son, wait, hold up. My son, wait, hold up. I'm not telling you no, but wait, this is not the job for you, right? So instead of me getting frustrated about all these emails that are coming in and I'm like, come on, what's going on? I pray the job finally likes me, what's going on? I'm like, God, you know what? Maybe you're doing something. I understand that you're doing something. You're fighting a battle for me in the background that I don't know of, that you don't want me to go through. Right. Um, when I when we are obedient and patient and we trust, <laughs> he word trust God, we will get the job that we pray for even better than what we even wanted and then still have God in our corner. Listen, I'm telling you, nothing beats that. <laughs> I promise you nothing will beat that. All right. So I have I have a couple prayer points for us tonight and I hope everybody was blessed. 
Um, I have a couple prayer points. First prayer point, my father, give me the strength to wait on you, especially when things get tough. I'm going to repeat that one more time. My father, give me the strength to wait on you, especially when things get tough. Let's begin to pray. My Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, we come before you, O God, tonight. And we just come before you, O God Almighty, and we lay ourselves before you, O God, knowing that our strength is not enough. So, Father, O God, we come before you, O God, in one accord, and we ask Jesus, give us the strength, O God, to wait on you, Father. O God, give us the, uh, the, the, the ability to fully trust you, O God, to wait on your timing, O God, for your timing is perfect, Jesus. Help us, O God, to wait on you, Jesus, even when things get tough, Father, when I have no money in my pocket, Jesus. O God, when I'm running out of gas in my car and I'm stuck on the highway, O God Almighty, when when when, when I, I don't I have bills to pay and I don't have a job, Father, give Give me the strength, Jesus, to not look at what's in front of me, but Father, but to look towards the hills where cometh my strength, Father. Give me, oh God, the strength, Jesus, to wait on you, Father. Give me the strength, Jesus, to trust you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, the next two prayer points we're going to pray towards April 8th, um, um, to, 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 so April 8th, the G-O-T-E, um, um, gathering the second one. First prayer point, um, um, I want us to, to tell God that we're expecting him, all right? Same way that you're expecting your delivery or anything. We're going to tell God. There's a song that goes from William McDowell. It goes, um, um, I'm expecting, anticipating a move of God, right? We're going to tell God, my father, I'm expecting a move over my situation. My God, this April 8th, um, this April 8th, titled, 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 um, 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 so, oh, a week. Uh, oh my God. Oh God. So, someone help me. Someone help me. <laughs> someone awake. Help me right now. Awake. There we go. Awake. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. <laughs> titled Awake. Jesus, I'm expecting a move, Father. I'm expecting a move over my situation. I'm expecting a move over my life. Let's begin to, let's begin to pray. Our Father in heaven, oh God, we come before you, oh God Almighty. Father, this time personally, Jesus. Oh God, April 8th, oh God, this next gathering, Father, I come before you. Father, I am expecting a move from you, Jesus. I'm expecting a touch, Jesus. I'm expecting a, a, a you to, to walk by me, Jesus. I'm expecting you to brush my shoulder. Oh Lord, my God, Father, I'm expecting, oh God, to be able to touch the hem of your garment, my God. Father, oh God, this April 8th, oh God, as we gather, God, in your name, in your name alone, Father, I am expecting expecting a move, Jesus, over my situation, over my life, Jesus, over my family, oh God Almighty, over everyone that is gathered here tonight, Jesus, oh God, I am expecting a move over everyone, oh God, no matter what they are going through, Jesus, no matter what we are bringing to the table, Jesus, we are expecting, oh God, a move that Jesus, the shackles will fall off, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and this we pray, oh Father, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. And last, uh, last prayer point, um, towards, still towards um, April 8th, my father, I just love saying my father, it's more personal, it's the thing, you know? um, but my father, the package that you have prepared for me on April 8th, father, deliver it in my hands, all right? And that goes, and this is very personal, right? And this with you being awake, right? Because you can't be asleep and receive a, a package, right? You can't, you can't, honestly, if a package comes at night and I'm slumped, I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to know about it, right? You need to be awake. Your hands are ready. So when the delivery comes, your hands are ready to receive it, all right? So I really love this prayer point. So we're going to pray. I'm just going to repeat it one more time. I'm going to give the floor over to Brother Tywo. My father, the package that you have prepared for me on April 8th, father, deliver it in my hands. Let's begin to pray. My father in heaven, father, I come before you, oh God almighty, once again, Jesus, and Father, I pray, oh God, April 8th, oh God, the night, Jesus, of our second gathering. Father, I pray, Jesus, the package that you've prepared for me. My God, I pray, Father, deliver it in my hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I will be standing ready, Father. I'll be standing awake, oh God Almighty. I'll be standing, oh God, and, and observe it, Father, and ready, Jesus. Father, the package that you have taken your time with, that you have properly packaged, oh God, with everything, oh God, because you've heard my 
prayers. You have heard my cry. You have seen my tears, Jesus. Father, oh God Almighty, that package that you have so carefully packaged, oh God Almighty. Father, deliver it in my hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are expecting you, Jesus. So we pray right now, every package that you have packaged, every, every package that you have put together, oh God Almighty, to, to give us our breakthrough, that will bring our blessing, that will bring our desires. Father, deliver it in our hands on that night in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, because it is done. We thank you because you have heard us. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Brother Ty, I want to pass it off to you. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Kenny. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can thank every of our speakers. Can thank you guys enough. Thank you for your preparation. May you continue to hear from God. May the Lord continue to use you in his hand as a vessel of gold, vessel of honor in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Your time of preparation, you know, we all are very grateful. Thank you very much. Does anyone have, before, you know, I pray, does anyone have specific prayer request? This is what Holy Spirit asked me to say. Does anyone have specific, specific prayer request? What you want us to pray about for you or for your family? All right. I want us to pray and tell the Lord, you know, before many of you joined tonight, you know, my spirit was really, really, really high because of the things Holy Spirit has been revealing to me, you know, um, this week and while I was in the gym today, please, I encourage everyone, I encourage you, please, I'm begging the name of God, don't miss your season. Don't miss your season. Don't miss, because the reason why I'm begging is because if you miss, the, especially for those who are not married yet, if you miss your season of discovery of your purpose while you are single, it, because that time you have a lot of time on your end. If you now want to discover it when you are married, you, it's going to be a lot of work, a lot of work. There's a season of discovery you need to work on now. Invest in it. There's a season of preparation of what you have discovered. Prepare, take all the information, what you have received, that you have discovered, begin to prepare. Do your research, get resources, get materials. You need to prepare. Then there's a season of execution where you need to execute what you have prepared. Please, I'm begging you, don't miss your season. The essence of life, the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. To live a life of purpose. I'm telling you, the enemy, the enemy is preparing something bigger. Something bigger than what many Christians can never imagine. And that is why I will keep emphasizing, don't be faithful in church as a worker. You are always in every services. You are always in, and please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying we shouldn't be diligent in church. But one thing I've seen in our generation, 20 years, this 20 years generation, I've seen people who are very faithful in church, but their connection with God is dead. Their spiritual life is dead. When I mean dead, like, they don't, they don't have a secret place with God. It should never be like that. It should never be like that. I'm telling you, it should never be like that. Please find time. Find, create time for God. Go on a retreat. Go on a personal retreat. You see, Holy Spirit put something in my spirit last year. Holy Spirit said, if I'm not... your priority when you are single, 
It will be tough for me to become your priority when you are married. When I'm not your biggest priority when I'm single, when you are single, how would God become your biggest priority when you are married? It is the zeal you have as a single person you take into marriage. You don't wait. I'm telling you this, please, I'm begging you. Work creates time to invest in yourself. There's nothing wrong in going on vacation. There's nothing wrong in being everywhere. People are always calling you, what are you doing? Oh, can you call? No, no, no. Find time for yourself. You see, your, de your destiny can only be found in the secret place. You must create, that's why you see, when a student is preparing for exam, they have to hide themselves in the secret place, either in the library or in their study room. Your destiny can only be found. Sometimes you have to say no for you to discover your destiny. You will say no to things that are good. You will say no to opportunities that are good. Why? To preserve the future. Please, I'm begging you. Find time. And lastly, our generation must pray and ask God to restore holiness. Holiness, character, and people of humility. People that, despite they are directors on their job, but they are still subject to correction in the house of God. I'm 39 years old. 39. My mom is in the bedroom. My mom till this age, she can still correct me till this age. There are days my mom would call me to the bedroom. My son, I observe this, I observe this. See, if you are a believer and you cannot be corrected and you cannot, you cannot receive correction in love or you cannot apologize, you don't know how to say I'm sorry, please walk on it. I'm telling you, because this is why I'm seeing all of this, if a, gen a generation rise that pray a lot but lacks character, they will destroy that anointing. I'm being honest with you. A generation that pray so much but lacks character because the only way you can sustain the power of the Holy Spirit is through character. 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 Character is one of the biggest strengths of a believer. Character. Character. Please, I'm begging you. Many of you know me, I'm a man of prayer, but a Christian, a generation that lacks purity. And that is one of the biggest things our generation is lacking. Purity, holiness, righteousness. I said something at the beginning. If you are one of the leaders that love to wear ripped jeans, rip anything, rip, please caution it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm telling the truth. Stop it. Stop it. You're trying to dress up and Holy Spirit whisper to you that you know this dressing is going to cause people to be seduced. Go back home and change. Go back home and change. I'm beg see, the reason why I'm saying all of this thing is because you can't, you see, let us pray. And tell the Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus, did Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross or not? Did he know he says, do you know how many times he told the disciple, my will is to do the will of my father? My will, my will, my will, my will. How come the same Jesus, he got to get Simone? And the Bible says he prayed three times to the point his blood was as thick, his sweat was as thick as blood. He prayed three times. The Bible says he came down for 40 days. The angel empowered him, ministered to him, and he prayed more. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is it takes a lot of grace to please the king. It takes a lot of grace, a lot of strength to please the king. This flesh must die to please the king. This flesh must, I'm telling you the truth. 
we, we, we have a king. We are sons and daughters of a king. And in the kingdom, there are rules and regulation. There is a lifestyle we have to live. I said something in the beginning. They met the same Peter, Peter, an educated man. And they said, ah, this man has been with Christ. They saw them at Antioch. They said, these ones are Christian. It's not really how much you can pray. It's not how much of the world you know. Can people look at you and just break down and be like, I want to be like this person. You didn't preach, but they can see Christ. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray that God help me to embrace the life of purity. Help me. I don't lie to you. I have many mentors who are not popular that many people don't even know. And that's why I always tell God, God, never allow me to chase fame. Never. 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 In as much I want to be successful. God, let me be a living sacrifice. Let my life become a living sacrifice in your hand. Let me be a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, meaning there are, there are some sacrifices, they are dead sacrifice. Dead. They are workers, but their sacrifice is dead. According to Romans 12, 1 and 2, that God help me to embrace the life of purity. Help me to embrace the life of obedience. Help me to embrace the life of purity. Prayer, prayer, prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to embrace the life of purity, the life of obedience, the life of holiness, the life of purity, the life of purity. Help me to embrace 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 the life of obedience. Help me to embrace the life of purity. Help me to embrace the life of obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us lay our hand on our chest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for how far you have taken us tonight. Thank you, O oh God, for our speakers of tonight. Lord, use them the more. Empower them. Lord, as we go to bed tonight, visit us, Lord. Visit us, Lord. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. Please don't forget our meeting that is coming. The Garden of the Eagles is coming. Um, April 8th, two weeks from now, on the 14th, on the 8th, I'm so sorry, on the 8th of April. Please don't miss it. Don't miss it. Come, anyone can come. No age limit. No age limit. Come expectant. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. You will not fall. Your expectation will not be destroyed. As you enter into the month of April, I decree a shift. A shift. I decree a shift. I decree a news, a new report. The Bible says, whose reports shall we believe? I decree a new report. You will receive another news. It shall be called good news. You will receive another news. It shall be called good news. You will receive another news. It shall be called good news in the month of April. I receive, I decree open doors, direction, direction, divine visitation, Divine visitation, divine visitation, direction, breakthroughs, fever in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Bless you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you.